Okay. okay. Take over. Right. There we go. So uh, the last one had quite a dramatic finish. Hopefully, uh, my finish won't be as explosive. Maybe maybe it'll be nice in a different way. But uh, I'm going to be showing a pretty like hands-on and like practical approach to making uh, dynamic lighting in your scene. So I've got this like basic scene I set up for this demo. It's got the like the standard lighting you'll find it when you open up a, a Unity project. And as you can see, it's got like these really bright colors. And actually, if you look at the hut, there's like the top is really white and you can't actually see any details. And like the, it looks all funny. And we're going to try to like work from scratch and make this look much nicer. And we're going to have this nice uh, cycle from daytime to nighttime. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need is we're actually going to need a sun and a moon. Those are quite basic uh, necessities to get a cycle. Sun and moon. And first thing, we're going to add a sun. So that's a directional light. And, yep, same thing. Whoops, that's a sun. We're going to duplicate that. And this is our moon. Okay, let's zoom back out. And uh, to make things really simple, we're going to have the sun pointing one way, and then we're going to rotate the moon to point the other way. So there we go. And we're going to move them a bit apart so we can actually see what's happening. Let's see. So sun and moon. Okay, now they're grouped together. So now when I rotate this uh, object, something's happening. It's looking pretty horrible. Oh. That's a good point. Let's actually remove that. There we go. That helps a lot. Okay. So yeah, really basic stuff. Actually, we don't have any shadows, so let's quickly add shadows to those lights. Soft shadows. And let's try that again. So when we rotate the group, sun rises, sets, and then we have the night scene. Okay, uh, but for this demonstration, we're actually gonna mimic a lot of things we see in like actual life. So it's gonna be based on the real world, and uh, that's gonna be a basis for getting like pretty believable effects. So right now the sun, it's got an intensity of one, the moon has an intensity of one. And that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So actually, moonlight is about a million times less intense than sunlight. So we're actually going to uh, drop the intensity of the moonlight by quite a bit. And we're going to bump up the sunlight a smidge as well. And now it's looking really horrible. But that's good. Good for this demonstration. And actually, we're seeing a cool effect here. Now it's nighttime, but our, the bottom of our island is glowing. And that's because we have a submarine sun. So it's beneath the ocean. It's lighting up the bottom. Uh, so what we want is for the sun to actually turn off once it's below the horizon, or like for the intensity to drop down. And we're going to quickly just make a script for that. So let's add a component. Let's call it intensity with angle. OK. So what we need is we need the light component from the light object. The light. And we're going to set the intensity. Uh, let's see. It's going to be based on the rotation of the sun. So we grab the rotation. And Euler angles dot x. So those are in degrees, so it's going to be 360 degrees. We're going to divide that by 360. So now it should do something. It's not going to do the right thing, but it'll do something. And if, if we're like prototyping, it's really useful to have the changes happening as you're editing them. So we're going to add a tag execute in edit mode. And let's see what happens. It's going to compile for a bit. Okay, and now the intensity dropped. 
if we rotate it, something happens, but it's like totally not what we want. Okay, so I'm gonna show like what fast prototyping looks like in Unity. You don't actually want things to work correctly, you want them to work kind of correctly. And so we're gonna add a animation curve. Okay, let's save that, it's gonna update soon. It's compiling again, it can be a bit slow. Okay, now uh, we get this curve we can actually edit. And we're gonna use this to actually set the intensity of the sun based on its angle. And actually we need to make the changes in the code. So uh, intensity curve dot evaluate and we're gonna evaluate based on the angle. So this here. And save that. Okay, we should see a change here quite soon. Yeah. Okay, so the intensity is one constantly. Now what we want uh, to happen, let's actually set this, to, okay, so this is sun, sunrise. And during sunrise, we want the intensity to start rising. Uh, then once the rotation is 90, we want it to be at max intensity. And it's gonna start dropping again so when uh, sunset starts approaching. Okay, back to here. So at zero degrees, it's gonna be close to maximum intensity, then it's gonna start Increasing, oh, let's see, when's it gonna increase? At 0 0.25, it's, so a quarter way, it's gonna be maximum intensity. Then it's gonna start decreasing, uh, then it's gonna be nighttime, so it's gonna be turned off. Hopefully this curve's gonna look about right. So let's try that. Okay, rotate the sun and the moon. Yeah, we have a nice intensity. And let's see what the intensity is now. It's totally wrong. Okay, uh, let's play around with this. Okay, the problem is here. Right, okay, we're totally at the wrong scale. We need to zoom, zoom way out. That was the problem. So yeah, game development, it's hard. Let's move these. Okay. Sun is off, and now actually the sky turned back on because of some settings. So uh, the lighting settings, like the sky doesn't know what the sun is, it just picks whatever's the brightest. We're gonna tell it our sun is the sun. Okay, so now the sun is off when it's underneath the ocean and that's a good thing. And uh, now we can't actually see anything because the moon is so weak, but we're gonna fix that. Uh, so the cool thing that like Unity has, it's got this post-processing stack, so it lets you do things like after it's rendered, you can modify the colors and stuff like that in a similar way that you would a movie. We're gonna add that to the camera. So post processing behavior. Okay, and let's just go through this and tick some really cool things. So like anti-aliasing, that's fun. Uh, let's see, we want some eye adaptation. Okay, so that's actually, you can kind of see there's a small change. So eye adaptation, it calculates like the average luminance of your scene. And then based on that, it'll actually adjust the exposure. So uh, with a higher exposure, it's gonna let in more light and with a lower exposure, less light. And uh, let's, let's put like daylight. So with auto exposure, this is what the scene looks like. Uh, like on the brightest moment, looks a bit dull. So we're gonna fix that. Okay, add color grading and bump it up by three. Okay, so this is daytime. Let's rotate back to nighttime again. And you can actually see something now. So post-processing stack is really cool. Okay. Now the issue with the lighting at the moment, so this is nighttime, and this doesn't exactly look like nighttime, and there's a good reason for that. So the way the uh, human eye works, is 
actually during like the daytime you see colors, but as like the light in the scene starts to decrease, you actually start seeing less colors and you start like switching to night vision. So when it's in a really low illumination setting, you're hardly seeing any colors, you're more seeing intensities. So that's what we're gonna want to mimic in our game scene as well. And actually another interesting property, uh, during night vision we don't actually see any red colors. So, so this flower demonstrates that. So the top is a brightly lit like daytime scene, in the middle is dusk, so like the reds start fading out and the greens become more apparent. And then during nighttime, like reds appear almost black because like our eyes are not responding to uh, the red wavelengths at all. So this actually sh shows it as well. The blue curve is like the nighttime vision, red curve is daytime vision. And so the aim here is going to be to mimic this and get our scene looking like it's nighttime when it's night and so on. Okay, so the way we're gonna do that is with color grading. And what color grading lets us do, it lets us tweak the color values in, like after we've rendered the scene. And actually an easy way we could get like this sort of nighttime look would be to play around with temperature. So if, if we actually drop the temperature of the uh, colors, they shift towards this bluer tint, which is what our eyes would actually observe. They start observing blue colors. But the issue with this is that, for example, we have this apple, and the apple, you can still see that it's like a red apple. So it's clearly, clearly not mimicking our eyes that well. So instead what we're gonna use is we're gonna use a really basic uh, channel mixer. So we're gonna be mixing colors. So during the nighttime we actually want like the redness of the scene to drop down completely. We put that to zero, so now our apple is pretty much black as, as we saw in the flower image. So right, so red turned to black and that's what we want. And otherwise we want it to be like pretty, pretty neutral, so like black and white. So this is what we want our like darkest moments in our scene to look like. They would actually be black and white. Now actually when there's moonlight, the scene isn't gonna be completely dark, it's gonna be slightly lit up so we don't actually want it to be this dramatic. Uh, you can actually see some color when there is moonlight, but like during sunset and sunrise when the moon hasn't quite, quite risen, we'd want it to look about like this. Okay, so how are we gonna do that? Like Unity by default, it doesn't really let you transition between any color grading stuff, so we're gonna have to do that on our own, but it's actually quite simple. Okay, so we're gonna add a new script to the camera and we're gonna call that uh, color grading with time. Okay, and we're gonna be interacting with the post-processing profile. So we need to import all the good stuff. Post-processing and what we want is a color grading model channel mixer settings. Okay, so this is gonna be the daytime colors, and then we want the same thing for nighttime colors. And then we want some value by which we're gonna be like transitioning between those. So it's gonna be, day, uh, let's see, daytime, nighttime, balance. Maybe that's a good balance, balance. And that's a floating point number, and we're gonna set that to a default of one. Okay, and the range for that is between zero and one. Okay, and uh, start, we don't need to start the script. Okay, uh, so first let's get the profile we're editing. So that's a post-processing profile attached to the camera. Uh, post. This is a profile we're gonna edit. Then from there we want the channel mixer. Channel, let's see, actually, okay, grab the settings. And Right, okay, now we have the channel mixer and we're gonna set new values based on our 
daytime, nighttime balance, like interpolation value. So channel mixer, first we're gonna mix the red channel. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna linearly interpolate between daytime colors and nighttime colors. And for some reason, the function for linearly interpolating is called lerp. If somebody knows why it's called lerp, I'd like to know. It seems like a really weird name. Yeah, but how does that become lerp? Why isn't it like lerp? Or, yeah, well, anyways. Uh, nighttime colors, we're gonna grab the red from there. Daytime colors. And uh, daytime, nighttime balance. Red channel from there. And since I'm a really good programmer, I'm gonna copy paste my own code. So that's like, if you don't know how to program, that's the best way. Just copy, copy paste all the things. And here we go. Then we're gonna apply these, so. Uh, color grading. Apparently we've typoed something. Right. Let's see. Settings. Settings dot channel mixer. And profile dot color grading dot settings. Okay, now we should see that stuff happening. And again, we want to execute in edit mode so that we don't need to jump into play mode constantly. Okay. Is anything happening here? Yes, everything went black and that's actually what we want. So when we're at an intensity of, or when the, like, the interpolation value is of one, we want it to be daytime and that's gonna be these values. Let's actually go to daytime, this looks weird. Right, so this is our daytime. And like, uh, so an interesting property again about like vision, let's go back to that chart, look at it a bit. So actually during the daytime, our eyes are more sensitive to like red or like this greenish yellow wavelength. That's like the most sensitive uh, wavelength of the eye. So we're actually gonna boost like the red channel a bit during the daytime. And we're gonna desaturate the blues a bit because our like, eyes aren't as sensitive to blue. So let's desaturate the blues. And this is gonna be like pretty much our daytime coloring. Then next we wanna play around with the nighttime coloring. So that's gonna be when this is at zero. Let's put some default values. Okay, so as I was saying, like reds, they disappear when, when night comes. So we're gonna remove reds completely. There we go. And it turns to black and white. So everything's actually gonna be the same value. So this is what it would look like during the night, and let's actually put midnight. So it's black and white. Uh, but actually, because we're humans, uh, for us, we perceive the nighttime scene as kind of bluish, because we're, we're like used to seeing these red colors, so when it comes to like this black and white nighttime, we think it's blue. So we're gonna take some artistic liberties here, and we're gonna shift, we're gonna increase the blue somewhat. Okay, so this is what our nighttime is gonna look like. And now we can just like change the balance here. And we can see kind of the difference. Let's increase the light again by going to daytime. So yeah. So this is what we wanna transition between. And again, we're lazy programmers, so we're not gonna calculate this, how you would actually do it properly. Instead, we're gonna use an animation curve again. So that's like, when you're quickly prototyping something just remember animation curves, they save a lot of time. Uh, so we're gonna call that intensity curve, or actually balance curve, makes more sense. Balance curve, and from there we're gonna, uh, what's going on? Balance curve, evaluate, and we're gonna 
base this again on the rotation of the sun. So actually we need to get the sun from somewhere. Sun, evaluate, and then sun rotation. And we're gonna grab the rotation about the x-axis. So daytime, nighttime balance is going to be based on the sun. Okay, then we wait for this to compile. If it's going to do that. Apparently it doesn't like what I wrote. We're going to ignore this. How do I ignore this? Yeah, I have to set the sum, it's not letting me back in to Unity. Ah, ah, yes. Okay, everything's fine. We're not gonna have, yeah, okay. Oof. <laughs> keep calm and keep coding. Okay, now we're gonna add the sun back and we're gonna, maybe it'll be happy with us now. Yes. Let's see. So now if we rotate the sun and the moon, something should happen again. Is it happening? Not quite. What have I defined? What's that? So somewhere here? Oh, 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 now I'm, yeah, 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 good, good. It's good we have programmers here in the audience. We can program as a group. Okay, let's see if stuff gets fixed. Come on. Yes, things happened. So now, if we transition, let's go to suns. Yes, okay, so sunrise is nighttime, apparently. Let's adjust the curve. Like I said, curves are amazing. You can do like, so during sunrise, we want it to be at about halfway, so you're just starting to see colors. Then it's gonna quickly rise up. Let's put that over there. And then once we start going uh, towards sunset, so that would be like halfway, but it's gonna be at half again. Then it's gonna go kind of down. But then actually like when the moon is gonna be like directly above you, we're gonna have some light, so we actually want this to jump back up. And then it's gonna go back down and it's gonna go back to 50%. So this is like really accurate and like this is, this is how physics works. There's like some guy who's like tweaking these curves and he's making stuff happen, but yeah. Okay, let's see if that works. Uh, let's see, 90. We should actually have maximum light intensity at this point. So apparently we're doing something wrong. Where is it at? Oh, okay. Yes, 360 degrees. Thank you. I would have spent the next like hour or two working on that. Yes, perfect. Okay, and now the sunset, so colors fade out. As you can see, the apple is like really black, that's good. Now the moon's coming up. Now we're seeing some color, so like, I don't know if you're seeing any color, but I'm seeing some color. So the trees are like the yellow, you can kind of see it there. Transitioning again. And daytime, where we have like vivid colors. So that's kind of how the eye works. And we're gonna add like some final touches to this. As I've been saying, like, I'm a lazy programmer, you should be lazy programmers. Lazy programming is awesome. So like, I'm so lazy, I don't wanna be rotating this by hand. So let's actually make some script rotate that for us. Rotate. Sun. Yes, we wanna update the rotation. So, we're gonna rotate by some 
variable rotation. And we're going to rotate it about the x-axis. And we're going to increase the rotation with time. And by some variable speed. OK. Yep. Let's wait for that to update. Speed. OK. Now if I play this, it should rotate. Yeah, it's doing it super slowly. Let's speed that up. Yeah, 20. OK, cool. Everything's looking awesome. How, much, how are we doing for time? Four minutes. Four minutes. OK, I'm going to add a moon. I've got time. OK, uh, we have the sun and the moon. Now let's quickly prototype. And the moon is a sphere, if you didn't know. Some people might think it's flat. It's quite round. OK, that looks like a moon, right? We, I am in the moon. Well, we're going to move this a bit further away, like way further away. OK, let's put, when's the, yeah. OK, so now the moon rises. It's a massive moon. I like, I don't like it that way. And let's try playing again. Speed this up, because we don't have time. 40, 50. Yes, we have, whoa. It looked kind of weird. Let's quickly fix that. Let's, let's make a new moon material. Cheese, let's call it cheese. Cheese, um, stop playing. Yeah, so let's like, let's make it white. Yes, see, now everything's good. And let's speed up the process. And there we go, we have a beautiful moon as it rises. And now we have dynamic time of day and we've done that in like less than 30 minutes, completely from scratch. If I had more time, I would add stars and all sorts of clouds and stuff like that. That would take like, I don't know, five minutes more. But yeah, so that's what, what you can actually achieve in 30 minutes. Uh, this was pretty basic stuff, but at the same time, it's like something a lot of people ignore. And uh, like, we're making video games, so that affords us all sorts of cool things. We can like have this, have this scene, and we can just by like changing the lighting and changing the colors, we can like completely change the mood and uh, bring like this visual attention to different things. So during the daytime, you would see the apple. During the nighttime, you have no idea where the apple is. That can be a good thing in games. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, short demonstration. And yeah, I hope you haven't fallen asleep. Thank you, Yuso.